the baby of Tomoe River paper and onion skin paper. That is what this paper is like. It is like the joining of those two papers, the combination, the culmination of their relationship. everyone. So I have kind of an exciting thing to share with you all today and it is going to be a review of a potential replacement for Tomoe River Paper. So I was approached by Danica58 on Etsy and she has a shop in Japan where she sells stationery and like washi tapes and journals. And some of the journals that she sells are made in particular by craftsmen that she, it sounds like she works with to create these notebooks. And I'm under the impression that she used to make notebooks with Tomoe River paper, but Tomoe River paper is no longer, so she's looking for an alternative. And asked me if I could do this review for her if she sent me some of the notebooks. I do wanna say thank you, Danica58, for approaching me and sending me these notebooks. First of all, the packaging was just so pristine and perfect and there was just like felt like there was no way that these would be damaged they were bomb proof I also just I love the feel of all of these in my hand there is something so solid and weighty about these notebooks the super squared binding I have new neighbors and they have dogs that are quite barky, so hopefully that won't be a problem. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember where I was. I was so distracted. I did this to the cover. Uh, I had just put on like a really greasy hand lotion and then picked this up and then was like, oh no, I made it all schmutzy. These, these arrived pristine. Oh, this one in particular is a beast. It's, it feels so fat. They're all the same, about the same amount of pages though. This one's 384 pages and this one's 386, which really gives you a sense of the weight of the paper. Um, this one is 64.5 grams per meter and this one's 50 grams per meter. So this one's really light, much closer to what you would see in Tomoe River paper. This is actually the one that we'll be reviewing. But I just love, I love the feel of these notebooks. The, the square binding is just extremely ah, satisfying. I don't know, I just like the feel of that. I like the look of it so much. And on the flip side, I love these rounded edges here like that makes a book feel really complete to me. Uh, it just, yeah, I really like that. <laughs> um, I've seen no books that have squared off edges or just squared edges and it just, they feel not quite done yet to me. And honestly, like it's those edges that are gonna get beat up over time anyways. So might as well trim them up, I guess, because they're gonna get squished and maybe having a round edge will <laughs> make them wear better, I don't. I don't honestly know. There's all these different cover options. This one is a soft cover, which is made of kind of a, a craft paper. I really like the color of this one. This one is also a soft cover, but just a different color. And I like the texture and the variance. It's kind of almost reminds me of a granite or a starry night. It's really attractive. Oh, there's even a little speck of red. And then this one is a hard cover. And I don't know, you can maybe hear the difference between the two. And then this one is a soft cover and this is in the B6 size. So in particular, I do want to do a bunch of swatches on this one and compare it with Tamale River paper so that we can get a sense of how similar or different they are. And maybe this paper here will potentially be the replacement for the beloved Tomoe River paper. So I'd like to swatch four different inks on these papers. 
I don't have any shimmering inks anymore, so unfortunately I can't show that off, but I did want to pick different types of inks that behave differently so we can really see how these, these papers react. So this is a Kobe ink, and I think it's a, a really nice shading ink. I have my sheeniest ink, which is Robert Oster Iridescent. <laughs> and this one was a, or it's not Robert Oster, Diamine. It's called Robert, and it was a Colt Pens exclusive. And this one is a sheen machine. And then I have a pigmented ink by Platinum. This is the, the Brune Sepia. And then last but not least is this ink that I really, really want to love so bad. I love the Birmingham Pen bottling. I love their packaging. I love their names. I love their colors. These caps are the Bakelite caps, so it's really satisfying. I love the size of them. <sighs> but unfortunately, of the six Birmingham inks that I have tried, and this was maybe a year ago now, so they may have changed. Um, they have all been really feathery. I just want to show you. These are all her notes. So all of these notebooks are actually different types of papers. There's the Torah. This one um, seems to be the heaviest weight. Oh no, that's the heaviest weight paper. Which is oh, okay. So this one is a smaller notebook in general. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> and some of them are lined and some of them are dotted. She also has a blank notebook available. Um, but I don't have that option to share with you. I like the lining of this. This is a seven millimeter, which is a really nice line spacing for me and my tiny handwriting. And I think I need to take off my sweater because the sleeves are going to get in the way. So apparently this paper was a little bit tricky in the beginning to print upon, but they finally figured it out and you can see that beautiful translucence. You could almost use it as a tracing paper. Here is a Tomoe River paper. This one is creamier. And let's just compare the translucence. Honestly, my impression of this paper is that it's a little bit more like an onion skin. It's got that translucent, it's really thin and kind of crinkly. It feels like if you were to fold this paper, it would make a super crisp line. Tomoe River paper still feels a little differently to me, but let's look at the inks and see how those compare. All right, the pen I'll be using is a really juicy, wide stub nib pen. This is a pen from the 1920s. It's a beautiful wall signature, well, signature nib with a tulip clip. And while waiting for those inks to dry, I'm going to write with my Pilot Custom 823. This is a fine nib. It has Diamine Prussian Blue in it. And my first thought when writing on this paper is how smooth it was. Uh, not the kind of smoothness that you get out of Clairefontaine or Nemesine, like a coated paper, but just 
more like a smoothness of Tamoe River paper, and arguably a little smoother, more like an onion skin paper. I'm keep, I keep being reminded of onion skin paper. But it's really pleasurable to write on. This could easily be a daily journal. And this could also be something if you wanted to get a little more creative with and do like some watercoloring and such, this paper could definitely handle that. Okay, we're still working with the Danica 58 paper. I wanted to test the dry time because Tomoe River paper takes a really long time for inks to dry on and it's, it's just not a very absorbent paper, which I think is why so many inks appear very interesting because they kind of like pool and spread out in unique ways that an, a more absorbent paper, the inks don't, just don't have an opportunity to do so. So I was curious to see in comparison how much longer or shorter these inks take to dry. And now moving back to the Tomoe River paper to do a brief writing sample and then also ex experiment with the drying time. Okay, the biggest difference that I noticed initially uh, was actually the drying time of the Tomoe River paper. This one is still drying, whereas this one has dried. The second thing I noticed is the difference in how sheening ink is displayed. So it definitely is a lot more noticeable still on the Tomoe River paper. And I think that has something to do with the drying time, to be honest. You'll notice that the one over here is a little bit flat, although the sheen does still show. And it does show a little bit on the Kobe ink there, the shading ink, but it does show even more so on the Tomoe River paper. The other ink that I noticed a big difference in was this Birmingham pen inks. And this one actually laid down just a lot flatter. Whereas over here on the Tomoe River paper, you can see that there's a lot more of a varied look. And this I think just comes down to personal preference. Some people really like a consistent ink and some people really like uh, something that's varied. So writing on this paper from Danica 58 was definitely really smooth. So if you like smooth paper, this is a great option for you. Believe it or not, the Tomoe River paper felt just a hair bit grittier, which was kind of crazy to me because this is a really smooth paper. You can see down here I did like a drying time and I made a mess. <laughs> so by 30 seconds, this is all a long drying time. This one was dry in 30 seconds, whereas with the Tomoe River paper, it was still wet after 30 seconds. So if you're looking for something that is lightweight and thin and crinkly and smooth and a little bit translucent like the Tomoe River paper, definitely this feels like a really good option. It does behave just a little bit differently though, as you can see. This is the Tomoe River paper and this is the Danica 58. And notice that there's actually a lot more bleed through, which is surprising because Tomoe River paper is known for being a really stable, sturdy paper and can take a lot of ink on the page before bleed through. So there's definitely a difference there. There is still a little bit of bleed through, but it's really not nearly as much as the Tomoe River paper. You can tell this is also a lot more translucent. Okay, so here is my mess. It's like, oh man, you play with fire, you get burned. You play with inks, you get inky. I don't even know where this black stuff came from though. That's the mystery. Okay, anyways, so here is here are my honest thoughts. First of all, the construction of the notebook. Absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, oh, I'm getting ink everywhere. I should just wash my hands. 
I don't know. I really don't know where that black ink came from. That's kind of concerning because I didn't use any black inks. Where are you, culprit? Back to the journal. The construction of it is just absolutely gorgeous. This is a really nicely made, well-built, well-constructed journal. It's just, I like the minimal uh, look of it and, and the design. And I love the square binding, like I said. I love the round corners. I just love how clean and crisp everything is. I like how it folds out so nicely. I like the weight of it. It just feels like a really beautifully made journal. The paper, however, I hate to say it, <laughs> does not remind me of Tamoy River paper. There are definitely characteristics that are similar. It's got that thin, crinkly nature. It takes a little bit longer for things to dry. It does highlight the inks a little bit more than a more absorbent paper. It is somewhat translucent, in this case actually a lot more translucent. But if I were to compare this to another paper, it would actually be onion skin paper. Oh, actually. I realize I haven't unpacked my onion skin paper yet, but I'm sure, because I have typed on it, it's somewhere in this typewritten journal. Aha! So, okay, this is definitely a lot more thin and crinkly. But really translucent, you can see that's the back of the page. Yeah, it's not it's not quite on the skin paper. Okay, you know what? Let me roll that back. If I were to compare this paper to anything, <laughs> nothing exists except the baby of Tomoe River paper and onion skin paper. That is what this paper is like. It is like the joining of those two papers, the combination, the culmination of their relationship. So <laughs> In a very large nutshell, to summarize, I really love these notebooks. I definitely want to use every single one of these notebooks, which throws everything into um, chaos because I just like settled into a new journal and a size and a system and I'm like, yeah, I love this one. I'm going to stick with it for a long time and blah, blah, blah. But now I have these four beautiful journals that there's just no way I could not write in these. So I have this crazy idea that maybe 2022 will be the year of just using journals I have and not buying any journals because I actually have a lot of blank journals now at this point. It's kind of crazy. I really like these journals. I would definitely buy these journals. I even feel compelled to buy these journals from Danica58 for the Traveler's Notebook. What did I just say about not buying any new journals? <sighs> Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, let me know below. And thank you, Danica58, for the opportunity to review this, this journal. I would like to do another video to showcase the other three journals. I just figured today I would like specifically look at the one that she originally asked, reached out about and asked me to do a review on. So I'll see you all in the next video. Happy writing.